12 rounds for the World Boxing Council Light Heavyweight Championship of the World with an unblemished, perfect record of 28 wins. No defeats with 20 of those victories by knockout. He is the number three ranked WBC contender. Making his first appearance in America, weighing in at the light heavyweight limit of 175 pounds and hailing from Bielsko Biala, Poland. Please welcome undefeated Tomas Adamek. Fighting out of the red corner, also weighing in at the light heavyweight limit of 175 pounds. He hails from the Gold Coast of Australia. Making his second appearance in the United States, sporting a professional record of 23 wins and only one defeat with 17 knockouts. He is the WBC number one contender. Please welcome Paul Hurricane Briggs. A hundred and eight and twelve for an amateur record. Paul Briggs is a former world champion in Muay Thai boxing. He had 54 wins and 59 fights there, so that was sort of his amateur record. All right, we're set to go with this big first fight of the evening. It's for the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Adamak is an unknown factor. He's beat everybody, knocked out most. 20 knockouts and 28 wins, so Briggs will have to be cautious early. Paul Briggs has spent the last year in the United States training under Jack Mosley. He's got good speed, good power. I broadcast several of Paul's fights, and I can tell you this kid can fight. Adamak is a guy who has a tendency to hang his left hand low, and that'll open up the right hand for Paul Briggs. Briggs is very strong with both the hook and the right hand. Adamak has an extraordinary reach advantage, so he's hanging that left hand low, but he hasn't fought anybody in the class of Briggs. Coming up on August 13th, more exciting boxing action. Global Glory, battle for pride and country, featuring Hasim the Rock, Rockman versus Monty Two Gun Spirit in the WBC Interim Heavyweight Championship. Save the date, August 13th. For tickets, call 312-559-1212. His entire career has been fought in Poland. He fought in England, he's fought in Finland, he's fought in Spain and Germany. Briggs not doing much here in the early going. This guy looks huge next to Paul Briggs. They both weigh the same. Adamak is a huge guy for a light heavyweight. Big, tall guy, 6'2". Paul's only 5'11". It's a big man. It Briggs is up against it. With Jack Mosley, he's really dedicated himself to training. But right now, Adamak is giving him fits in the first round here. Paul's from the Gold Coast in Australia. He throws his right hand, and Adamak showing some quickness on his feet. And just in the opening few seconds here of this uh, first round, I see that Adamak... He's a pretty good fighter. Briggs is learning to attack the body, but he can't get at it so far. Now he clips him with a left hook. Briggs is a very, very tough guy. Only been down once in his career, and that was a couple of fights ago against Jesus Ruiz. He got knocked down in the second round, but he came back, and the WBC eliminated to win that fight. Chopping shots by Edemek, was keeping pressure on Paul Briggs in the first round. Briggs not doing much. Harry nails him with the right hand and the uppercut of the inside. As Paul with the left hand backs the guy off. When he enters that kill zone, he better be throwing against this guy. And it's going to be tough to enter without throwing because of the extraordinary reach. 75 and a half inches to 71. Adamac comes downstairs. That doesn't bother Briggs. Briggs a very tough kid from the goal. Born, you know, in New Zealand. So he's a Kiwi 
by Blood, by Burke. That one blocked May Stiff's left hand by Adamak. Adamak drills the body. And now Briggs is getting kind of warmed up here, the number one contender. Paul Briggs in the black trunks facing you. He goes with his right hand lead. Ten seconds to go in the first round. Adamak, I think, has won this first round, though. Briggs hasn't done an awful lot in the first round. Third man in the ring, by the way, is Tim Adams. This Paul with a nice stiff right. jab. Let him go. Let him All right, go. the bell ends round one. So that's a good Adamak round. And, of course, the crowd in attendance in the city of Chicago, very heavy Polish influence here. So they love this guy. And, of course, they all came out to see Andrew Golota. This is Adamak's if you gotta suck it, don't give him no courage to jump on you. Continue to work your jab to the body. That's Jack yeah. Mosey now your face. talking to Paul. Continue to be, don't be tight. Him. Relax, Very Paul. good Just teaching. Relax, okay? He's out of Mac with a stiff jab that he catches with his light right hand. Paul very quick on his feet, then he plants. And watch Briggs come back here. He's a game guy. This guy, Muay Thai boxer, who went to Thailand as a youngster. So he's tough. Not easy coming over the States and training for a year to get ready under the hands of Jack Mosley. All right, here we go. This is round two. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here in Chicago. And now Paul Briggs is split wide open. I don't know what hit him. Step right there. But we got to find out whether it was a glove. Give me a time for a minute. Give me time. is out. Paul Briggs is cut. We got to find out if it's a head or a glove. That was caused by a headbutt. Caused by a headbutt. Yes, the cut was caused by a headbutt. That's very important because if the fight has to be stopped because of an accidental headbutt inside of four rounds, it's no contest. And this is a bad cut to the job? left side of the eye headbutt. caused by a headbutt. And the referee, Tim Adams, right on top of it. So Paul has got some problems here now. Step over and he's there. calling the doctor in. Watch the heads come together right there. I mean, Paul's the one that came forward. Just but it's an accidental there. headbutt. And that often happens when you have a tall okay, guy so fighting a shorter okay. guy. And Adamek just put his head down Body, and Paul crashed right into it. But Time is back in, so that cut is serious. Briggs has got those hands high now. And he's going to attack. There's a real sense of urgency now for Paul Briggs. Right hand falls a little bit short, and Briggs is really fired up. Adamak tries to battle back. There's the jab in the face of Briggs. And this guy looks like Goliath. Left hook, big left hook that time by Paul. This cut is to the left side of his left eye. It's not over the eye, and it's not in the lid. That part is good, but it's a bad cut. It's deep. Stiff jab by Paul. Tomas stands right in front of him. Nothing fancy. He's just so big. And that's where his power comes from. Tries to drill the body of Paul Briggs. With this back to you in red, Tomas Adamek from Poland. Stepping up in class to fight the toughest fighter of his life. And so far, he's risen to the occasion. Briggs goes with his jab. What does it look like David Goliath here? Animus is huge. Coming up on August 13th, more exciting boxing action. Global Glory. Battle for Pride and Country featuring Hasim the Rock Rachman versus Monty Two Gun Spirit in the WBC Interim Heavyweight Championship. Save the date, August 13th. For tickets, call 312-559-1212. They better hang on and slide down the ropes. Instead, he goes offense. Briggs has a concerned look on his face, too. That's the left hook as he lunges at him. Adamak right back. Paul's wife arrived here yesterday. He's dedicating this fight to his daughter, Aramea. The religious guy is... His son's name is Isaiah. Aramea's second birthday. And Paul, that cut is really bothering right now as the blood is coming down pretty hard. This is going to be a sin if this fight has to be stopped because of that cut. And of course, they'll have to do it over again. Because remember, a cut inside of four rounds by an accidental headbutt is a no contest. Paul Briggs is very swollen underneath that left eye now. And if Adamak was smart, he'd stop hitting him by that eye and try and get this thing in the later rounds. But that isn't the nature of fighters.
a stiff jab, cracks him again with the right hand. Boy, I'd be jabbing, jabbing, jabbing. I'd be circling to my left. And I'd let this thing go to the scorecards because Adamak has won the first two rounds. After the fourth round is complete, it goes to the scorecards. And in my opinion, Adamak has won the first two rounds. We're getting ready to go to the third round. And there is a sense of urgency for Paul Briggs with that cut. Again, his cut man is a good one. And Max Garcia. Adamak just looks huge in this fight to me. He's so big. He's quicker on his feet. I saw a couple of tapes against him. Nice right hand that backs him up. Briggs might have him staggered. Paul is all over him. Here's your sense of urgency. And now Adamak bounces back, and Briggs has got to keep the pressure on him. He's a pressure fighter, and Adamak doesn't hold up to the pressure too well in the fights I've seen him, but Paul hasn't been able to pressure him too much in this fight. There's the stiff jab. That's the first real pressure he's put on him. His Briggs hanging on and blasting on the inside. Adamak is tough, though. He's very tough, and he's very big. Tall, long reach. Briggs looks like a little boy against a big man out there. And that little boy is out. Coming up on August 13th, more exciting boxing action. Global Glory. Battle for Pride and Country featuring Andrew Powerful Paul Galata versus Premislav Chemik Salita in the Polish fight of the century. Save the date, August 13th. For tickets, call 312-559-1212. And parry that jab with his left hand and then throw his right. Paul's not doing that right now. He's got to be a smarter boxer than what he's doing right now. He's got to get off the show. Briggs is really a, a better looking fighter to me against a very stiff opponent than what I've seen him before. Working with Jack Mosley. Good slickness uh, to Paul. Good upper body movement. Even though Adamak is very strong, those punches were blocked by Paul. That one taken sort of up on the top of the head. Briggs is having his best round of the fight here in round three. And he needs it. Big cracking right hand. With a hard body shot that time. And right back comes Adamak. So the hard shots that Briggs is landing is not taking a toll as the blood continues to stream down the left side of the face. Looping right hand. Now the significance of the accidental headbutt inside of the four rounds is that after four rounds it goes to the scorecard and Briggs could win the fight, but he's got to win this round and then he's got to win the fourth round to get back in the fight. Then it's up for grabs. As it is right now, Adamak would win the fight based on the fact that I think he won the first two rounds. But I think Briggs has won this third round with 35 seconds to go. But he needs to land a definitive punch here now to be sure the judges see it the same way I'm calling it. Adamak backs him off. Paul comes forward with his head down again. Trying to invite him in and counter punch him. And now right back comes Briggs. Briggs has landed the power shots in this round. But that blood is becoming a problem. All over his face, but it's streaming from the left side of his eye. Briggs in the black trunks facing you. Closing seconds of the third round. Doesn't want to stand here without throwing. That's a good jab by Briggs. Nice stiff jab by Briggs. He's making that jab a punch. And the bell ends the third. That's a Briggs round on my score sheet. Say hello to Danny Green. He knows you get that comeback fight coming up in July. And Danny, I hope to be there with you. Watch this. In the early part of the round, Briggs actually had this guy wobble. Look at he sets him up, drives off the back foot, textbook stuff, and then bang! He nails him with the right hand. Look at the legs now of Adam Eck. You see? A little sloppy on the knees, a little heavy in the heels. Now he tries to nail him with another shot. Comes with an uppercut. Coming up on August 13th, more exciting boxing action. Global Glory. Battle for Pride and Country featuring Andrew Powerful Paul Galata versus Premislav Temik Salita in the Polish fight of the century. Save the date, August 13th. For tickets, call 312-559-1212. Briggs must win this round in case it's stopped in the next round. Up on his toes. Nobody's landed anything in the first few seconds here of this round. There's that stiff jab of Briggs. Remember, the height and reach advantage of Adamak was a problem in the first two rounds. And, of course, the cut very significant. 
Briggs able to stagger him in the third. Adamek not looking as good right now as he did in the first round. And Briggs on an inside shot. Paul needs to come with an uppercut in the inside and he can crack this kid. And when he realizes it, he'll nail him. And what he's got to do is feint more. Jack Mosley teaching him to feint. He covers himself up pretty good that time. Adamak drills the body. That's the looping right hand by Briggs. Adamak in front of him. Scores with a light shot taken on the back of the gloves by Briggs. Briggs is waiting too much now. There he goes with his jab. This is uh, developing into a better round this time, but Adamak, if Briggs can't let him have this round. Now there's Paul with a looping right hand. He's got to nail him with something heavy to make it definitive on the judges' scorecards. Because when you cut, your face is a mess, and it's a close round, they'll give it to the other guy. And don't forget, the crowd is heavily in favor of Adamak. Adamak chops him with the right hand. They've done a nice job again on that cut. They're cheering for Adamak all the way. Briggs tries to nail him. The problem is that tremendous reach and height that Adamak has. This is a tough round of hole for Paul. Adamak making it tough for him. Nice jab. Good kind of right hand by Paul. Nice fading by Adamak as he comes forward. A little puffy around his eyes now. He's never faced anybody like Briggs either. But he's holding up well. He was stagged in the last round and recovered okay. Briggs having trouble planning his jab. So he's got to throw more right hands. He's got to throw some uppercuts. And he's not doing it. Ball is very tough. A Muay Thai fighter. Uh, they're just tough guys. This is the uppercut by Adamak. Adamak touches him up with a jab. Ball a little frustrated right now as he goes with his right hand lead. Adamak bends forward and avoids it. Takes it on the gloves. Ball in that kill zone without throwing. That is the right hand. Right back to Adamak. So the power of Briggs has really not shifted Adamak except for that one time in the third round. Only 30 seconds to go in this round, and Adamak has actually outboxed Paul Briggs in the fourth round. They cut in the second round. Nice uh, foot movement by Adamak. Whoa, get him up. Whoa, you're a little too Adamak's low. Adamak's eyes are very up, okay? puffy. That's too low. That's one. Get him up. He has okay. never faced anybody that is uh, jabbing quite like Paul Briggs either. But there's no cut there. But the thing is, is that Adamak is outboxed Time. Briggs in the fourth round and leads it three rounds to one. And that's significant, considering the cut to the eye of Briggs. Jack Mosley, the father of Shane Mosley, talking to his new protege. Paul wanted me to say hello to Kelly Meehan, Costa Zoo. Look at this. This is a pretty good middle of the round for Adamac. Rocky Katsidis, Shannon Taylor, Vic Dachanian, the new champ. Angelo Haida, Russell Cates, Gunno from Pain Away, all those guys. Paul knows that you're all watching and wants you to be with him along with his old promoter. Tony Caradona in the crowd at Penrith. Paul is so proud to be fighting for the world title here, but it's not going his way after four. It's a tough fight for him. He's got to land more right hands, and he can't seem to get to this guy. This is round five. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here in Chicago. This is the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. And things are going Adamak's way right now. Briggs was cut in the second. Adamak was staggered in the third. But the third round is the only round that Paul Briggs has won. This puffiness around the eyes of Adamak in the red. Briggs from Australia, Adamak from Poland. But a big, big Polish community here. And now the warning comes from Tim Adams. And he'll take a point away if he continues to pull ahead of Briggs. He's already... Coming up on August 13th, more exciting boxing action. Global Glory. Battle for Pride and Country featuring Ricardo El Matador Mayorga versus Michelle Picciarillo from Italy for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship. Save the date, August 13th. For tickets, call 312-559-1212. As he tried that sneaky left-hand uppercut, I'd like to see him come with the right-hand uppercut. As the stiff jab. It's a fairly even round through the midway point. Adamak not much, very successful with the hook to the body, but he's been very successful with his jab and his reach. And that's the difference. I like that feint to his left and then back to his right. 
That's good movement, getting the angle. Now blood is trickling from the nose of Adamak. By far his toughest fight. He won his last fight over Ismail Abdul in a Warsaw Poland. And a guy by the name of Jevlov in Finland before that. And then guys by the name of Beard, Dalton, and Kalahio, and Barrios and Terrasten, none of whom I have ever seen, but I've seen films of them fighting. And against those guys, he didn't look that good. Paul just got clipped with a good right hand and another good right hand. But his conditioning shows as he comes back with a good right hand of his own. Adamak really nailed him with that right hand right on top of that cut. And that cut is a serious factor now. But they've done a good job to this point. Paul is not showing the sense of urgency that he showed in that third round, though. He's taking his time with this guy. As his head down again and the heads come together. Adamak has a real look of confidence on his face right now. As the blood trickles from his nose, then he spins, skids tough. Polish kid is a tough fighter. He's a lot better than what I thought I saw in the films. And with his huge size advantage over Paul, Paul just looks like a little schoolboy against him. One thing you can never measure, that's the size of a heart. And I know Briggs has got a big heart. Here's the right hand. Got to land more of those. Right back with the right hand of his own. And right back comes Briggs. So they seesaw with the right hands. And the bell ends, but I'm afraid that's Adam X round again. So the only round I've been able to give Paul Briggs is the third round. Don't do that no. No, no, that's, don't do it. Slow his ass down. He's trying to move on you. Slow him down. More body shot. More straight hands in the body. Say hello to Ray okay. Wheatley, the vice president of the IBF, who is at World of Boxing okay. Magazine. Great don't job over him. there. Paul Upham has uh, got that uh, 05 version of the Boxing Almanac from Australia. Paul, thanks for sending me a copy. I used it preparing for the Australian fighters. It's a great book. Now watch the right hand in this replay we're going to show you. By Coming up on August 13th, more exciting boxing action. Global Glory. Battle for Pride and Country featuring Ricardo El Matador Mayorga versus Michelle Picciarillo from Italy for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship. Save the date, August 13th. For tickets, call 312-559-1212. Third round, and Paul just not showing any sense of urgency so far. But they've done a terrific job in that cut in his corner. And that's to the credit of Max Garcia. By the way, Adamek is a great cut man and Jim Strickland as well, but he's not cut. He's just puffy around his eyes. So far, it's just the size difference from what I can see and fathom out here. Now, when you take a look at the score sheets, or rather the records of these guys, in the 28 fights, Adamek has never been 12 rounds. That can be either good or bad for Paul. He's been into the 10th round three times, and he's had 17 knockouts inside of four rounds. But we're in the sixth round now, so he's entering strange territory. Paul, on the other hand, in his last two fights has been 12 rounds. He's been 10 rounds twice, and he's had 14 knockouts inside of four rounds. But we're past that, too. Basically, both of these guys knock out journeyman fighters early. And this is a tough, hard fight. And Adamak continues to beat Briggs with a punch here. Paul has got to land more right hands. He's got to come with uppercuts. And he must be throwing when he closes into that kill zone of Adamak. And that's tough because Adamak has just got such great, great reach advantage. The way to offset that is to get outside of his jab by getting off his left shoulder and then touching his left hand when it comes out and letting your right hand go. But Paul now circles to his left. He needs to circle to his right and punch at that hand when it comes out that jab. And cut those with his own right hand. That's the way. Adamak fighting a textbook fight right here, I gotta say. As Paul with his jab. I'd like to see him off that shoulder a bit more. The jab. That was the right hand. You see where he was? He was off that shoulder. When he's out there, he can land it. When he's right in front of him, he can't. So Briggs must get his angles. Has the right hand again. Not from the exact position I want, but he's getting the idea. And he's throwing more right hands. Nice stiff jab. This could be Briggs' round at this point. Left talk, but a little deep from behind the ear. Didn't quite catch him right. It's tough for Paul when he comes inside. This kid ducks his head and comes forward, and Paul is missing up behind his head. But the right hand is landing. 
Now, I can't tell whether that's Briggs' blood on the cheek of Adamak or Adamak is cut. Adamak uh, clips him and Paul comes right back. There's the right hand that crashes to the left side of the cheek of Adamak. Adamak knows he's in against something he hasn't seen before in this guy, but he has nice movement. I like that slipping move. I like his leg movement. Briggs, I think, has won this round. This has been a good round for Paul Briggs and his best round since the third. There's that jab of Adamak. Briggs needs to land one more if he can. There's the bell to end it. That's a pretty good round for Briggs. The it takes to come to the States, face the tough sparring partners, get a guy like a Jack Mosley. Now, when you get Angelo Hyder and Jeff Fennick, trainers of that sort over there, You've got good Let's trainers go. in Australia, but it's the sparring that's difficult to get. So for the boxers over there that are great friends like Rocky Concedis and Danny Green and especially Shannon Taylor, these are sometimes moves they have to make in their career. And Paul has done it and dedicated himself. And right now he's coming up a little short, but he had a pretty good sixth round. Coming up on August 13th, more exciting boxing action. Global Glory. Battle for Pride and Country featuring Sergey White Wolf Lyakovich from Belarus versus Owen What the Heck Beck from Jamaica in a heavyweight elimination bout. For tickets, call 312 559 1212. Drill the body to no avail. Paul hasn't done any body work to this guy, and the reason is he can't get to it. Not like David Tour trying to get to the body of Big Lennox Lewis. And in a way, some of the problems that Paul is having are similar to that night that David Tour was having. Because David just couldn't get to him. Paul has had some success getting to him. He staggered him in the third round, and he had a good sixth round. And this isn't a bad seventh round. This is going to come down to conditioning, and I know Briggs is in shape. The cut, which has been a problem since the second round, has turned out to be just a nice job by his corner. But Adamak is outboxing Briggs in the seventh round again. And Paul can't afford to give this round away. He's creeping back into the fight giving him away on my score sheet would have Adamak out in front by three rounds. This ball will get hit by three punches and then he counters with shots of his own. But Briggs is making a mistake of standing right in front of him. When he stands right in front of him, he's very hittable. When he gets his angles, not only is he not as hittable, but he lands better shots of his own. This ball moving now. And that's what he needs to do, and he's doing it right, moving to his right. That hooking right hand is By far, Adamak's best opponent for Briggs, certainly his best opponent as he's working out. It's a tough fight for Paul. But again, he had to go 12 against a Stipe Davis up in Homebush, in, uh, Homebush Bay there in Australia his last time out. And he got a good hard 12 rounds against Jesus Ruiz. So that has him ready for this fight. But neither one of those guys were able to do what Adamak is doing to him right now. And Adamak's just out boxing him right now in this particular round. Paul needs to put some rounds in the bank. He's going to the bank, but he's not drawing any money. Adamak continues to outbox. Briggs gets downstairs, then back upstairs. The blood trickles from that left eye. Both of these guys wanted bad. Both of them in great shape. Paul faints and makes a miss, but he's sitting on the ropes now. And the Polish kid comes forward. He's outboxed Paul in this round as Adamak. I like that move by Adamak Green. Like face was up. There's the right hand by Briggs. Got him pretty good. That was good at the end of the right at the bell, but I don't think it's enough to give him the round. Gene. Well, Dutch Joe was doing a nice job there helping out. Let's go. Seconds out. Look at that eight. Look at that eight. And Peter Maniatis, we're going to try and get there for your 100th boxing show, too, in Melbourne. So we've got to work all that out for you. Here we go. Round number eight. Paul Briggs trailing in my scorecard. By three rounds. Or three points, as it were. Briggs tries to go with the right hand lead. But look at that pumping, jabbing motion of Edamak. And that's just his reach, and he knows how to use it. Remember, Edamak has only been in the eighth round, and very few occasions. His Paul coming on with the uppercut. He's been in the tenth round three times in his career, and that's it for Edamak. Never 12. Nice, nice right hand! Rocked Adamak. He caught him with a good right. And let's see if Paul can take advantage of it. He buckled the legs of Adamak. There's a lot of time in this round. 
Paul's going to see a sense of urgency. Coming up on August 13th, more exciting boxing action. Global Glory. Battle for Pride and Country features Sergey White Wolf Lyakovich from Belarus versus Owen What the Heck Beck from Jamaica in a heavyweight elimination bout. For tickets, call 312-559-1212. Adam X seems to have his legs back, but he's staggering him with a good right hand shot. This kid's in great shape. He never would have been able to gobble up that punch. Paul backing off and waiting and waiting. Sitting on the ropes is a bad idea. Good stiff jab by Briggs. The blood continues to come down the cheek. Right hand on the inside. Blood coming from the nostrils of Adamak. He's standing flat-footed. Briggs attacks with the left hand. Backing off now is Adamak. He doesn't have the power on that jab, but he's backing off. He plants, goes with the right hand lead. Paul, looping right hand, catches him on the ear again, backs him off. That one wasn't as powerful as the first one earlier in the round. Minute 15 seconds to go in the eighth round. Briggs showed no sense of urgency, which means he's very confident in how this fight's going for him. I don't know if he realizes he's a couple of points behind. He needs to be sure he wins this round. Right back to Paul, and he's ready to drop him. The Polish kid's ready to go. Briggs is all over him. He pops him on the inside as Adamak hangs on. The Polish people don't like what they're seeing. The Aussies that are in attendance love it. Andrew Bellum has come all the way here from Melbourne, and he is thrilled. Paul is waiting. He's patient. He's supremely confident. He knows what he wants to do, and he's not losing his cool. And now he says, come on, fight me. The Polish kid doesn't know what he's saying, but he knows that Paul's talking to him. 28 seconds, 27 seconds. Paul is superbly confident, but he's behind in the fight. Don't fool with this guy is my advice to you, Mr. Briggs. Don't fool with him. And Paul just shakes him off. This macho stuff is no good with the judges. Briggs attacks. This is his best round of the fight. He staggered him once before, but look at this kid come back. We hit us a war. It's a war in the close of the eighth round. Briggs nail him at the belt. Watch uh, Briggs when he nails him and wobbles him the first time early in the round. And remember, there was plenty of time, but Paul, no sense of urgency. It's a counter right hand shot. Now, look at this. Watch the legs of Adamak. If he's not in the kind of condition he's in, he's going to drop. But he hangs on. He's smart. He hangs on to Briggs. Briggs doesn't panic, and I like that. He doesn't really push for the knockout. And then a left. So left, uh, later on in the round, I should say, he hurt him again as Adamak's knees buckled and went back. But this guy is in such great shape, he has tremendous recuperative, uh, recuperative powers. And at the end of the round, he's coming on, so Briggs nail him at the ropes. I mean, at the bell. This is a terrific fight, by the way, folks. I hope wherever you're watching around the world, I know all my good friends uh, up in Penrith uh, are enjoying this fight. Tony Caradon and all the boys at Valentino's watching the fight tonight. Adamak comes forward, digging body shot by Briggs. Adamak's ribs could have been broken with that one. He's got blood coming from his nose. His eyes are closing up. He may have a broken nose. Briggs nails him with the left hook. He can't take too many serious head shots anymore. He's as tough as nails, and he's in great shape. But he's taking a lot of punishment, too. His right eye is almost closed. Now, Briggs, as you know, was cut back in the second round, and his corner's done an extraordinary job. Remember I told you how tough Paul Briggs is? I learned that from Muay Thai. And all you guys that are fighters in Australia, this is an example of what dedication can do when you come over to the States and just dedicate yourself to boxing. Briggs is a greatly improved fighter no matter what happens. Coming up on August 13th, more exciting boxing action. Global glory. Battle for Pride and Country featuring Luis Colazzo from Puerto Rico in his first title defense versus Miguel Angel Gonzalez from Mexico for the WBA Welterweight Championship. Save the date, August 13th. For tickets, call 312-559-1212. That's what it means. Jack Mosley has done a wonderful job with a very coachable fighter. Looping right hand backs off the Polish kid. When I say the Polish kid, I mean they love the Polish kid here in a very predominantly Polish town. They tell me, right hand by Briggs lands. Again, Adamak shows his conditioning. 
but his heels are heavy. He bounces back and lands shots on Briggs as well. Briggs must win this round, remember. In spite of the fact he had a great eighth round, I still have him behind in the sport team. So with a minute to go, this round is still up for grabs. And Adamak is not boxing fully in this round. It's a very even round. Neither guy has won the round yet. It's up for grabs. Now Adamak's out boxing him. As Briggs with a power shot, which is partially blocked. As blood continues to come down, the left hook lands. Adamak catches him. Briggs counters him. It's the counter left and the counter right hand. When Adamak throws his power shot, he exposes himself. Nice uppercut. Where's that been all night? And now he pushes Briggs back. Ninth round. This one's very tough to call this ninth round. Nice stiff jab by Paul. Now he's waiting. I don't like it when he camps out in front of him. He's got to get his angle. And now he's on the assault. Is Adamak on the assault? And that's going to capture probably the round with the judges' scorecards. Not a lot between them as the bell ends the ninth round, but I think Adamak got that round. I think he did. It was very close. Don't go straight back, you hear me? That's enough water. There's three rounds to go, Don't and I've go got Adamak back. out in front okay. by three points. Don't go straight back. Now, the half is the close Eight rounds. Goes. Hey, I want you to box him. Watch uh, this round. This is very good. Paul Briggs trains on bee power, a natural way to train with honey, and it's paying off in this. But look at this, Adamak having a good round in that counter right hand. Now, is that enough for the judges to give that round? Because Adamak really didn't react that much to it. The way that book that Gary Todd put out, uh, Boxing Greatest Workouts, goes to the era of Muhammad Ali right up there. Costa Zoom and Christy Martin. All right, here we go. Round 10. Paul Briggs in black from Australia. The big house favorite here is in red trunks. Tomas Adamek. And everybody in Poland is watching the fight tonight. We want to say hello to the people watching it in English because it's also in Polish over there. We welcome you, and your man's having a pretty good night so far. And, of course, the big fight between Lehman Brewster and Andrew Gos uh, Golata is our main event of the evening. For Australia, this is the main event. Adamak back to pumping that pistol like jab in the face of Briggs. Briggs catches him with a looping right hand, but it doesn't really shift him. Paul needs to land some power shots, but my score sheet, he needs to win every round to win this fight. To really get back in it, he needs to knock Adamak down. Sitting on the ropes is not the way to do it. He attacks, and Adamak is able to gobble up the shots of Briggs. Nice straight right hand by Paul. All fighting sort of in spurts. Adamak's reach has been the difference, in my opinion, in the fight. Both guys have shown superb conditioning. Briggs has never been staggered. Adamak has been staggered twice. Those only account for two rounds on the Briggs score sheet. Look at these guys battle here. This is tough stuff. Both of them in great shape. Adamak, of course, performing for the Polish audience here in the United Center. Knows everyone back on the Coming up on August 13th, more exciting boxing action. Global Glory. Battle for Pride and Country featuring Luis Colazzo from Puerto Rico in his first title defense versus Miguel Angel Gonzalez from Mexico for the WBA Welterweight Championship. Save the date, August 13th. For tickets, call 312-559-1212. Said he goes to the left hook. This is tough stuff for Briggs. Fight a big, tall, alligator-type guy like Adamac. It's tough to fight. That's the right hand that gets through, but it doesn't rock him. It might steal the attention of the judges, though. Nice stiff jab followed up by the right hand. The right back comes out of back with three punches of his own. This is just really a tough fight. And there's not be a lot between the two of them in this round either. So is the crowd going to sway the judges here? The judges, Johnny Key from the UK, John McCarthy from Illinois, and Uritani from Japan. Nobody really has an advantage as far as the judging is concerned. And you know what? I'm afraid that Adamak, I'm afraid for Paul Briggs fans, that Adamak is winning this round. You people watching in Poland, I have no fear that you're happy with this round. Briggs hasn't landed the big definitive punch. Almost! 
I've got a 97-93 in favor of Adamak, meaning Paul Briggs would need a knockout or at least a couple of knockdowns to win this fight. Again, the Danny Green, I'm going to try and get over that. You don't like Penrith. Uh, oh, actually, in uh, the you know, hometown of Perth, and they go side. back and do the Big Arizona show on July 3rd. You don't have no power. You know, Kevin Hunt's trying to work things out with Pontus Airways to get to the show. We can work it out. Oh, I'll be back here. Lost this title bid against Marcus Meyer, but we're all with you. We know the ability you have, and you get your shot again. Great kid, great fight. Not easy to go to Germany, and it's not easy for Paul Briggs to come to the States here. He's given it everything he possibly can and it's not working out his way coming up on august 13th more exciting boxing action global glory battle for pride and country featuring hasim the rock rockman versus money two gun spirit in the wbc interim heavyweight championship save the date august 13th for tickets call 312-559-1212 gotta go after now adamac almost going with Briggs right now and that's not a good idea for adamac that's a good idea. Plant that jab in the face of Briggs. That's a great idea. Well, the cut has been a distraction to Paul, especially around the third and fourth round. The corner has done an extraordinary job in that the accidental headbutt came way back in the second round. Because Adamak outboxing Briggs. Briggs has got to have a sense of urgency. He cracked him with that right hand, but he didn't shift him with it. He needs to land a series of those right hands. And if he gets him in trouble again, he better attack. There's a right hand again, but it's not shifting him. Maybe Paul is running out of steam in his punches at this late portion of the fight. He can go 12. He's done it the last few times up. But he needs to knock this guy down or knock him out to win. And that's providing my score sheet is accurate. There's a right hand that caught him. Briggs is winning this round now, but he doesn't want to be talking to this guy. Any talking he needs to do with his fist. Countering inside, he's trying to sucker him in so he can counter him with the right hand, but he's going to be off the left shoulder. There's the angle. You see what he's doing? He's saying, come in, come on, come on. He definitely has to drop him if he's going to win this fight. And now he's got the left hand down of Adamak. Adamak is ready. He's primed, but his Briggs, no. See that left hand down? Briggs has got to sneak off that left shoulder. If he doesn't, he'll knock him out. If he doesn't, he's going to lose the fight. Caught him again. That's four times that right hand. And Adamak keeps coming back. He's in magnificent shape. There's a big right hand again. So does Paul have enough power left in his right hand at this late stage to drop this guy with his right hand? He's landed it five times in this round, and he's going to win this round. But winning the round isn't enough. He's got to knock him down and knock him up. For Adamak fans, all he's got to do is hold him on. And he's really doing a nice job with his reach of outboxing Paul. For Paul, it's got to be power shots now. He's in the wrong position. Adamak is off his right shoulder. There's the left hook that spins ahead of Adamak. 20 seconds to go. Briggs can still win this round. He's landed all the power shots. There's a stiff jab. He needs to try and drop him. He doesn't see the, see the sense of urgency that I see. There's the bell ending the 11th round. That's a Briggs round, but it's not enough points this late. Eritani is pretty much down the middle, and I don't know John McCarthy scoring in Illinois. So those are your contingents. But I do know this, you're watching one whale of a light heavyweight championship fight. Again, if Briggs wants to win this fight, he better knock him out. Here we go, it's championship time. Who wants it the most? Briggs needs a knockout to win. Adamak starts off. Paul nails him with the right hand to open up the festivities here in round 12. And Briggs is doing it right now. He's trying to sneak off that shoulder. Snapping right hand shot misses. Continuing to box is Adamak. He's done a nice job throughout the course of the fight of stealing and winning rounds with his jab and long reach. Adamak has a real good, serious, clear-eyed look at his face. 
streak was cut back in the second round. Coming up on August 13th, more exciting boxing action. Global Glory. Battle for Pride and Country featuring Ricardo El Matador Mayorga versus Michelle Picciarillo from Italy for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship. Save the date, August 13th. For tickets, call 312-559-1212. I'm going to know they're in a prize fight, but who's going to have that light heavyweight championship of the world? There's blood all over ringside here. We need a hazmat team to come in here and clean up my sports team. Briggs needs to be urgent now with less than two minutes to go. Paul Briggs needs a knockout to win. And he better get a real sense of urgency now. Briggs is waiting too much. He's going to be patient. In his last fight, you know, he had his opponent down three times and he didn't push for a knockout. Here he's got to push for a knockout. Or he's not going to win this fight, I don't think. The blood continues to come down. Of course, there's a tremendous fatigue factor. These guys are both going out on their shield. They're not going to leave much. A minute, 12 seconds from now, both of these guys are going to be pretty well expended. Adamak is out boxing Briggs here in the last round. And he continues to come on. Briggs' his legs are strong, but his punches don't seem to be as strong as they once were. Waiting for Adamak. He wants the counter and coming in. But he can't time it. Stiff jab, but that's no good at this stage. Needs to load up some right-hand shots. Adamak is almost out on his feet of fatigue, but both of these guys are conditioned for the full 12. And was there any question that Adamak could go 12? At one time there was, but he can. He's up boxing Briggs. Briggs tries to counter him, nails him with the right hand, backs him off. Briggs needs to attack. He's only got 30 seconds to go. He's almost out of time. It's been a terrific light heavyweight championship fight. One of the best I've seen in a long time. A terrific fight for Adamak, who's outboxed Paul Briggs. Briggs has landed the power shots. Some judges may see it his way, who knows? There have been some close rounds. The crowd is going really berserk here. At the end of the fight, they exchange at the bell, but it's all over. That was a war. That was a good fight. That's what professional prize fighting is all about. All right, let's give it to our ring announcer. Go ahead, take it away. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to the judges' scorecards we go. Your official scores are as follows. Judge John McCarthy scores this bout 115-113 for Adamic. Judge Nabuki Yeratani scores this bout 114-114, a draw. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge John Keen scores this bout 117-113 for the winner and new WBC light heavyweight champion from Gillies Poland. So Adamek gets a majority decision. Japanese judge had it scored 114-114. John McCarthy had it 115-113. And Johnny Keane scored it 117-113. So McCarthy and Keane had it on either side of my score sheet. And that's about right. A majority decision win for Adam Ang. Unfortunate for Paul, he gave it all he had. He looked terrific, but then you knew, light heavyweight champion of the world. Tomas Adamek. That kid put on one heck of a show. And while we didn't know much about his opponents, we know now the kid can fight. Because this kid definitely can fight. But the right guy got the decision as Thomas Adamek wins a majority decision over Paul Briggs.